Royals Baseball is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. It is a gorgeous night in California's East Bay as the Royals continue their nine-game road trip with three over the weekend against the Oakland A's. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the ballpark with Rex Hudler. I'm Ryan Fever. Joel Goldberg is coming up. Game one of three between these two teams with a big question, HUD, being is the slate clean? The slate is clean as far as the benches that were clean back at the K. As much water it's run under that bridge, that golden gate across the other side over there. It's over, Ryan. It's got to be. But that started all of it right that there. That was ugly. I've seen it again. It's even worse. But look, there you go. Now they're even. Should be. However... It continued to go on. That, I believe, was intentional. Drop Kane. And then Herrera says, oh, my glory. He was bracing for that. Didn't happen. But, you know, that was a lot of fireworks back then. But since then, they've been pretty good. Academy Sports and Outdoors leaderboard. Now, a week ago, we could say the Royals have a lot more to lose than the A's do. But now the A's are playing for something. They are. They're trying to get back into this race in the West. And it's anybody's race there. 6.9 runs per game? How are they doing that? Wow, that's good. And how about that average of runners in scoring position? They're getting timely hits. Got to shut them down. They'll be facing Edinson Volquez for the first time since 2007. The Royals are 10 and 4 when Volquez takes them out this year, and they won eight of his last nine. AT&T U-verse high-speed internet. The U-verse revolves around you. Call 1-800-PICK-ATT. By your Kansas City Chevy dealers. Come visit for great prices on all the new 2015 Chevy vehicles. And by the Missouri Lottery. Every ticket you play gives back to schools across Missouri. So play it forward with the Missouri Lottery. We are inside the O.Co. Coliseum in Oakland, California, and down on the field, right outside the Royals' dugout, is Joel Goldberg. 
And I know, Ryan, a lot of people have talked about this new rivalry with the Royals and the A's, the wild card, and then the shenanigans back at Kauffman Stadium with some of the ejections. But talking to both sides and, and the players say that they feel like enough time has passed that this is over. Billy Butler said the same thing to me earlier this afternoon. Hopefully it's just, you know, something we can get over. And, uh, you know, we're all about there going out there playing good baseball. We're not trying to hurt anybody. People play aggressive. You know, there's certain precautions that have to be addressed when certain things happen. I hope they've all been addressed and we just move on and play some great baseball. So not expecting anything here tonight. You never know. Guys, I went down and talked to the umpiring crew and crew chief field in Colbreth. And he said, look, we got the same reports before the series that we do literally, he said, before every series. It details anything that has gone on, including any shenanigans. They're aware of everything that went on. And what Fielding told me was, look, we just want a good baseball series. We expect a good baseball series where two really good teams are out there playing and may the best team win this series. He said, if something else happens, we'll deal with it. But we don't expect that to happen at all in this series. No warnings beforehand. All right, Joel, thank you. Here's the Royals starting lineup presented by State Farm as the Royals still lead the league in team batting average. And with Lorenzo Kane and Mike Moustakis and Salvador Perez recently getting some time off, a day off yesterday, the Royals have their regular nine in there to begin this series against the A's. And they'll be facing right-hander Jesse Hahn, who pitched well against the Royals in Kansas City. Yeah, he's been really good in his last six starts. He's got a four and one record. Opponents aren't hitting much off of him. He's a tough sinker baller. <laughs> He's got a good hard sinker, 92 94. Curveball, a big one, and a good one. And a nice change up that he'll use to keep him off balance. Now, a big story in this series is going to be defense. The Royals are the best in the major leagues. You can make a pretty good argument that the Oakland A's are the worst defensively in the major leagues. Yeah, they've made more errors than any other team in baseball. But they just have a plus eight for defensive run save. So the Royals are refreshed after a day off yesterday. They started this road trip taking two out of three from Seattle. The Royals have won three of their last four road series. And Alcides Escobar gets booed because Brett Laurie slid into his leg in Kansas City. <laughs> what are you booing Esky for? What did he do? He got a lot of character in the crowd here. Fastball for a strike. Escobar had a terrific series against Seattle. He had seven hits. He drove in two and he scored three times. Got his average up to 285. And Hahn ahead quickly. No balls, two strikes. Yep, he's very aggressive with his two seam fastball. And he's not going to back down. He'll elevate that as a four seamer. As, the, as he gets a little deeper in the game, he'll start throwing around letter high. Like that one. That's what he wants to do. Ground ball pitcher. Escobar went and votes will throw him out. That's what they'll have to look for that four seam fastball and then out of the same arm plane is the big curve. So he used the high fastball and got him to swing at the curve. Very few sliders. 25 years old, Jesse Hahn, originally out of the Rays organization. Mike Moustakis also had a good series in Seattle. He had five hits, a home run, and three RBIs. It's Paul Schreiber, home plate umpire. Call that high fastball. He does an excellent job of keeping the ball in the ballpark. Just three home runs allowed in 84 and two thirds innings. He's been really good. And his sinker, big curve down the dirt. Those are hard to square up. That ball was squared up. The bad hitting luck as Zobris makes a play in left field. And now Lorenzo Keane with two down. Center fielder, number six, Lorenzo. Tough start to the season for Han. He did pitch well in Kansas City. 
but in his first eight starts he was a quality start pitcher with an ERA about four and a half but he has been very tough over his last six 204 opponents average. Renzo Kane had just four plate appearances in the Seattle series. Got the first game off and then felt a little something in his hamstring during the game on Tuesday, so he was not in the starting lineup Wednesday. And that's hit well into left center field, and Sam Fold makes a play. So it was a noisy top of the first inning. But Hahn gets the Royals 1 2 3. The A's will face Edinson Volquez when we come back. At a third base, number two. No score to the bottom of the first inning. And Bob Melvin's team is out of the cellar. Well, they're at least tied for fourth place, having won five straight and nine of their last 11. They have had an excellent month of June. They are 14 and 8. And offensively, they are third in the league in runs scored. You know they're also second in the league in ERA, which you know begs the question: How are they 34 and 41? I guess we'll find out this weekend. We will, but I can tell you when you don't catch the ball, and you know this, Rhino, you don't win games. 72 errors up by their team. That's one of the reasons. Henson Volquez seven and four. The Royals are 10 and four in games that he has started this year. And this is his first start against the Oakland A's since 2007. Wow, I guess there's not anybody on that team. It's, it's, it's still with them. Volquez has only faced the A's three times. Two and zero on Eric Sogard, their rookie sensation. Billy Burns has a 15-game hitting streak, but he has the day off, so. Sogard leads off for the first time in his career. And now three balls and no strikes. I just saw something, HUD, that you pointed out all year, but before that pitch came in, Salvador Perez extended his right arm. And I watched Eric Hosmer, and Hosmer took a few steps back and toward the line, letting him know that a pitch was coming in inside that may have been pulled. Yep. Salvi uh, pay, pays attention to all detail out there, especially the corner fielders. Let's him know when an off speed pitch is coming or something like that. He, he's really aware of everything. Makes the whole defense run. A true quarterback. Volquez, fastball, curveball, changeup. And he was on his way to first base. It appears to be a good pitcher strike zone tonight from home plate umpire Paul Schreiber. Two seam fastball, it has a lot of movement on it. Sometimes too much, but he caught the corner there. Just want to challenge this guy. You don't need to mess around with Sogard. He can't take you deep. They can put it in play and use that great defense. 
Down into center field. Lorenzo Kane is there for the first out. So the Royals defensively presented by Ford. Now the Royals have committed just 36 errors. The Oakland A's 72. The Royals have allowed or their errors have led to just 11 unearned runs. That's the fewest in the major leagues. The A's defense has led to 38 unearned runs. That is the most in the major leagues. That's, that's been their Achilles heel. So much so they brought Ron Washington out of retirement and hired him to help their infielders. Former manager with the Texas Rangers mm -hmm. and a longtime coach here before taking that job with Texas. He was their third base and infield coach for a long time. One and two on Brett Laurie, who went into a deep slump. After that series in Kansas City. And. He had a tough time it appeared at least letting that series go. I mean it was a week later and we were still hearing Brett Laurie quotes. From that series in Kansas City. Yeah you know sometimes that. When you continue to talk about it. It brings undue pressure. It's Laurie. It's got to go. Puts a lot of pressure on yourself when you talk to the media better off not saying anything. Let it go. Just like. Yesterday they were trying to stir up some stuff about them coming in from Texas, you know, want to know if there's gonna be anything going and Lori said, I don't want to talk about it. Time to move on. So two down to Stephen Vogt. Now those of us in Kansas City believe that Salvador Perez should be the starter at catcher in the all-star game and he will be that with the number of votes that he has. And the country for the most part feels that way. But here in Oakland. They believe that Stephen Vogt. Based on what he's done on offense. Should at least be an all star. He is. Fifth in the league in hitting. He leads the league in RBIs. He is. Fourth in slugging percentage fourth in on base percentage. And he is second best in the league with runners in scoring position. Putting up the numbers. That's for sure. He's got the most home runs for a catcher in the American League. 13. Three up, three down for Volquez with two strikeouts. Beautiful. Pitch.
three up three down with a couple of strikeouts. Our next covering the bases with Rusty Kuntz is coming up at Kauffman Stadium with the Commandos from Topeka Kansas. That is a 12 and under team. They'll be out at the K on July the 8th. Getting instruction from Rusty, a current and a former Royal. Congratulations to the Commandos. Look at that. Now that's a team right there, Hud. No one's sitting on the bench. They're all up against the fence cheering on their teammates. Love it. And they didn't even know. I bet they were taking a picture of them. Supporting each other. Cheering them on. One and one to Eric Hosmer. Hosmer, Morales, and Gordon coming up. The Royals went down one, two, three. Hahn struck out Escobar, but then Mustakis and Kane both lined to the outfield. Might have some trouble against Hahn if you try to pull him. He's a sinker ball, curve ball. Here comes a high fastball. It's going to do that to set up the curve again. So until they figure that out, with that pitch there, they can't hit that. It's a little bit all you know, take it, but the curveball's coming next, so you can get him into a pattern. Hoping Haas has the same kind of series he did against Oakland earlier when he went six for ten. Just a bit outside. Yep, that was the, that's the pattern so far. It's early. High fastballs and then the curve. And, and the reason they do it is it fools him, comes out of that fastball plane, and then it drops. And it drops a lot. He's six five. That curveball comes out of the sky. Glory cuts in front of Simeon. One down. Well, we're still waiting for the final results for the American League All Star team, but we can tell you about the Royals' futures game. The Royals will have two players on the world team Chesler Cuthbert. Who is playing at AAA Omaha, 22 years old? He has eight home runs, and who many consider the best prospect in the Royals organization, Raul Mondesi, at AA, 19 years old. He will also represent the world team. Glad to see it. Puts a huge spotlight on those young players, gives them a little taste of what's to come. Into the left field corner, Got slicing, and that is a fair ball and a home run for Kendrys Morales, a slicer that just carried into the corner, and Kendrys has his ninth of the year and a nine-game hitting streak. On contact, it looked like that ball was going to either drop foul, slice foul, but stayed up enough to get over that 330 sign, and he sliced the pole. Gordon. Oh, I'm trying an off-speed pitch. Changeup. He waited perfectly on it. <laughs> he just stuck it over. There you go, Eddie. You got you a run. And it is a huge accomplishment to hit a home run against Jesse Hahn. That's just the fourth home run he has allowed in over 85 innings. And it's just the eighth home run he's allowed in the last two years. Impressive. He got one up, and but see, that's that's the right approach. You want to stay middle uh, in the opposite field with this with this guy because he's got such good pitches that move down. He wants you to roll over. Morales with a great approach there on a on a changeup. Alex didn't mean to make contact. One ball, two strikes. This was before tonight, the fewest home runs since the beginning of last year. So Jesse Han now tied with Hyun Jin Ru, who spent some time on the disabled list, so he has missed some time, but you had to go at least 150 innings to qualify. So that is a rare home run allowed by the 25 year old right hander Jesse Han. Royals did line to the outfield twice in the first inning. Now vote wants that curveball. And Alex hits it up the middle. 
and is on with a one out single. Guy with a big curveball really got to concentrate on that release point and seeing what it looks like. And when he hangs it up there, you you can definitely see it. Now he's going to let this ball go a little bit more, guys. Let it let it go. Okay, right there, right there. Freeze it. That's head high. That's going to be the pitch to hit because it's going to stay up. The one that comes out letter high, that's the one in the dirt. Ooh, that got vote. So Sal knows what that feels like. Got him on the inside of the leg. Curveball pitchers, of course, if you can find the right time to go, can be good guys to run on. He's just going to talk about that. He, he doesn't hold runners very well. Matter of fact, he, he likes to hold like four or five seconds sometimes. He freezes. But he also has a little quick hop move to first base. So we'll have to see. But you're right. Pick the curveball. You can walk in a second. Two and one on Sal. There's that pause you were talking about. And now three balls in one strike. Steven Vogt does a nice job throwing catchers out. 24.2 percentage of runners. It's not too bad. With any help from your pitchers. Grounded to Lori. Out at second. And a double play. But the Royals are on the board. Kendrys Morales has hit in nine straight. He gets his ninth home run of the year. One nothing Casey. One nothing Royals on the Kendrys Morales home run. Keep voting. The deadline is July 2nd. Royals.com slash vote. 
And the MLB All-Star Game coming up on July 14th on Fox. Royals.com slash vote. Next Thursday, you can vote up to 35 times. Seems a little awkward here in Oakland when they're saying vote, vote. Yeah. They, they want you to vote for their catcher. That has a making of a who's on first type of a skit. <laughs> Well, I don't think he can catch Salvi in the votes. That's why we're asking the folks to keep voting. Ben Zobrist, when the A's were in Kansas City, had to come out of a game on a Sunday afternoon with a sore knee. And as it turns out, he needed surgery. So he's had an abbreviated season in his first year with the A's. And he's the kind of guy that just about every contending team is taking a look at with the trading deadline coming up. He has had several seasons playing multiple multiple positions. A couple of times he played six positions in one year. One year he played seven positions. He's a veteran Brock Holt. Been doing it for several years now. Good leader. Long run Mike Moustakis into foul ground and Zobrist is the first out of the second inning. University of Kansas Hospital injury report. Chris Medlin has made two rehab starts with double-A Northwest Arkansas. He has gone eight innings. With a 5.63 ERA. Seven strikeouts against two walks. Royals still expect to see him after the All-Star break. Steady as she goes. Ball one to Josh Reddick. Not imagine that Medlin is going after these rehab starts like a healthy pitcher would in spring training, where there are more important things at the moment than getting hitters out. It's probably just about throwing strikes. It is. It's about commanding your pitches. Going through the routine, building up your innings until you're ready to get back to the show. And then when guys feel like they are where they're supposed to be when it comes to velocity and movement and control, it's kind of like the last week or two of spring training when the pitcher's, okay, now I'm going to train. Now I need to get some outs. I'm not going to work on my slider today. I'm not going to work on my two seamer today. I'm just going to get outs. So I don't matter the velocity. That was a swing by Reddick. Two balls, two strikes. Nice back to back changeups from Volquez. Good pitches that go away to the left handed bats. Full count. Volquez has done a nice job against his opponents this year. Lefty's not hitting much off him. Overall, 227 average against. Been able to keep the ball in the yard very well. Two hops to Escobar. Close, but out. Two down in the second inning. Here comes Billy Butler, and here comes our AT&T U-verse Rewind. And it was on this date eight years ago. Look at that young guy. Billy's first major league home run in Anaheim against Irvin Santana, who Billy had some interesting battles with over the years. Either Billy would hit a home run or Santana would drill him. <laughs> and then they were teammates for one season. Oh, that's not right. Of course, I remember when Irvin became a Royal, and that was brought up as he was going to have to share a clubhouse with Billy Butler, and he diplomatically said, "You know, I never really tried to hit him. I was just trying to pitch him inside, and the ball just got away from me." <laughs> Osmer stretches into foul ground, so Billy Butler is out, and Edinson Volquez has retired the first six A's tonight.
enjoy America's pastime with your family and friends and the Royals. The Minnesota Twins are in town on the 4th of July, and the first 10,000 fans through the gates receive a Royals trucker-style baseball cap, courtesy of the Kansas City State Company. And then after the game, a great 4th of July fireworks spectacular. Get those tickets now at Royals.com or call 1-800-6-ROYALS. Alex Rios, Omar Infante, and Alcides Escobar in the top of the third inning against Jesse Hahn. Somebody might go up there and try to ambush that high fastball. He keeps throwing them up there. They're going to start looking up there. One and two. Another curveball that stayed up. Alex Gordon also jumped on a hanging curve. And now it's Rios leading off the third inning with a single. And that brings up our most trusted player, brought to you by the most Manny trusted Lester brand, Honda, Omar Infante. All of a sudden, he's and caught in fire. Hit safely in nine of his last ten. Love that. 395 average. Good for him. He needed to make some adjustments, and he has. Shorten up his bat, finding those fastballs, and he's not missing them. Exactly what you do when you get hot. Stay short to the ball. Earlier in the season, Infante had a good series against the A's. Four for eight, two doubles, two RBIs. Rios three for three and steals this year. And there goes Rios. Hit and run. And again, Infante pulls the ball. And when they executed the hit and run in Seattle, it was the shortstop as the cover man, not the second baseman. And Infante almost got it past Simeon. Just a little bit more top hand roll, he would have had it. First and third. Nice try, though. At least he got him to second. Escobar. Fastball away usually will let that shortstop cover the base. Most of the time, breaking balls, off speed stuff. That a right hander could pull the second baseman usually covers. So it all depends on the pitch. What the pitch is. Escobar jumps on a hanging curve. Han threw him a great curveball in the first inning and struck him out, but since then he's been hanging that pitch. And now Gordon last inning and Rios and Escobar in this inning have jumped on that curveball and the Royals have runners at first and third with one out. There it is. You know when it, I showed you earlier the breaking ball comes out and you could pick up the spin when it's head high it's going to be hittable. And that's the ones they're getting. So he doesn't get an RBI but he adds to his high average with runners in scoring position since the middle of this month. Mustakis with runners at the corners and one out. Fastball across the knees for a strike. Mustakis hit the ball hard in the first inning, but lined out to the left fielder Zobrist. Love that. Runners in scoring position average 294. He's picked that up big time in the last three weeks. Getting those clutch hits. Let's get up underneath something. Sack fly of work. They'll take anything more. 0 oh and 2. Yeah, that 294 was 194 through May 18th, hitting with runners in scoring position. Right. He was down in that category, but you know he's getting on base. He was setting the table up. Now he's starting to knock him in.
Fastball is too high, one and two. When Morales homered, that gave Kendrys a nine game hitting streak. Mike Moustakis has a nine game hitting streak. Sam Fold, the center fielder, has six outfield assists. The right fielder, Reddick, has four. Zobris throws well, but he didn't have it. Assists. So far. Good arm in center field. Rio single to open the inning. And with one out, Escobar single. Escobar flinched. I think he was ready to take off for second base. First movement was towards second. But he's able to get back in there. You know, really not, not a bad chance to try to steal here. Stay out of the double play, possibly. But Moose is looking up. With two strikes here, though, he's going to be a, a little bit more defensive. Anything close, put it in play. Two down. Sometimes when you're geared on that fastball and he elevates it like that, you're going to swing automatically. Got it. Now batting number six, Lorenzo Cain. Lorenzo Cain also lined to the outfield first time he was up. Now the Royals need a hit with two down. Lorenzo has hit safely in 11 of his last 13 games. Royals have been really good this year in this situation here with two outs. Runners in scoring position. Her first in the American League and with a 298 average. With two outs and runners out there, second base and beyond. Been down. One ball, one strike. Escobar keeps dancing around over there at first base, and that really is distracting Jesse Hahn. So you hope that Escobar can keep his focus off of Kane and leave Kane something up in the zone. He can hit hard like he did his last time up. The middle into center field and the Royals come through again with two outs and a runner in scoring position. So Kane picks up Moustakis. Rio scores and the Royals lead 2 nothing. That's what you're talking about. Sinker baller stay on top of it directed towards the mound. There's a big hole there and by the time that second hop it had that big top spin like hitters like and that bounce got got it right through. Very nice two out hitting. Escobar did the right thing by not going to third base. Fulp would have thrown him out probably. With Hosmer and Morales coming up, don't make any outs on the bases if you don't have to. So that puts the Royals right at 300. Two outs and runners in scoring position, 16 points better than the next closest team. That curveball stayed up again. Hosmer takes it for a strike. 
One and one. Eric grounded out to third in the second inning. Had a couple of swings where he really was trying to pull Han. Sometimes you wonder why a guy that gifted to be able to go the opposite field with all that power is even concerned about pulling. He has great power to center and left. Two and one. That's one of the reasons why we see pitchers pitch him inside all the time. They're trying to tie him up. They don't want to give him anything out there. Make him work. Get that pitch count up. Let's get into that bullpen. Which is not a good bullpen at all. Change up fading away from him. Great spot. Gets away from vote. That'll probably be a pass ball. And it puts two runners in scoring position for Hosmer with a full count. Ball looked like vote could have caught that. He just missed it. Han has hit eight batters this year. That's the most on his staff. So he's kind of been wild a little bit. Something to keep in mind if somebody gets hit tonight. That's also the second most in the American League. Going to be a race to the base. Hosmer and Han safe. And that's going to score two as the Oakland defense betrays them again. The Royals have three in the third inning and a 4 nothing lead. Beautiful. That's what good base running, good speed does. It pressures. Hosmer, he's been really running hard to first base on, on contact to the infield. He earns this one. He knows it's a foot race. He's keeping it on. He's got a smile on his face. He knows he's going to get that knock. First baseman. Ike Davis, he looked like he traveled on that one. Couldn't quite get the transfer out to get it to Han Number in time. Eight. Number 25, Hendries Bornaus. So the A's add to their league lead categories they don't want to add to. That's their 73rd air and unearned runs, number 39 and 40. Both those categories lead the major leagues. And it's Kendries Morales with Hosmer at second base. Kendry's homer the other way got it just inside the left field corner in the second inning. On a changeup. So Han went with a fastball up on him there. And he had the same a very similar swing. By the way they scored that an infield single for Hosmer. No RBI and. Or one RBI. And the second run. Scoring on the air. So Escobar comes home on the Hosmer RBI. Kane comes around on the air three. Han gets out of it with a strikeout. Three runs for the Royals, two unearned, and a four nothing lead at the end of two and a half.
This is an error, and the Royals end up with three runs to give Edinson Volquez a 4 nothing lead. Now, it's very early, and yet history tells us that Edinson Volquez is as close to unbeatable when he has four runs of support or more. This goes back to the beginning of last year when his team scores four or more runs. He is 21 and 0, or at least his team is 21 and 0. That's better than Clayton Kershaw, Scott Kazmir, Corey Kluber, Bud Norris. Like it, hope it holds. And he's done his part, pitching two perfect innings so far. So it's the lower third, Ike Davis. Marcus Simeon and Sam Fold. Mike Davis is a another A's player who has dealt with an injury. He had a quad small tear. Left quad, left thigh muscle. He missed five weeks and hasn't hit much since coming back. One ball, two strikes. So far, the left right combination of Ike Davis and Billy Butler has not quite panned out the way the A's had hoped for it. First base and DH. Hasn't really worked out that way, but when the A's signed Billy Butler, they thought he'd play quite a bit of first base. They saw him at that position. More than the Royals did, or saw him playing that position more than the Royals used him there, at least in the last few years. When we got to the ballpark today, we saw Billy working at first base with Ron Washington, their infield instructor, and he was working him out good. Billy was gassed, throwing short hop picks to him, hitting fungos to him. They were working him. Change up fades outside three balls two strikes. Billy got off to a great start for the A's. He started the season with a 12 game hitting streak which was an A's record. For a new player. Carried that hitting streak into the series with the Royals. Into right center field. Mike Davis is on to begin the third inning. Our Toyota League leaders for tonight, you go back to June 23rd of last season. That's when Edison Volquez really got his season going with the Pirates. And only Max Scherzer, who started his start today with five perfect innings. Only Max Scherzer, Clayton Kershaw, and Zach Grinke have a lower ERA than Volquez since June 23rd of last season, a little more than a year. I wondered how Scherzer did. He, he, he pitched the first five innings perfect. Perfect. <laughs> that guy's amazing. Great so start. now in, in three starts, a one hitter at Milwaukee, a no hitter, and then a perfect game into the sixth inning. This is Marcus Simeon. One ball, one strike. Simeon's first year with the A's. We saw him with the Chicago White Sox, but this is a homecoming for him. He grew up in the Bay Area. He went to Cal Berkeley, which is not far from here. Good movement. One and two. On the ground to Moustakis, and they'll get the out at second base, and that's it. So the lead runner is down, one away in the third. Volquez almost rolled up his ninth double play. That's a lot. 
And then gotta give it up. So he's got that Jack movement Hanley. in his pitches that head down. Change up, down, Dang. curve down, two seamer. Oh. Almost got it there. Sam Fold with a runner at first base, one down. Take strike one. You just saw his batting average is 207. He went through a seven for 76. That would be a zero nine two. And I am surprised by that because he runs so well. Mm -hmm. well you're going that bad. You, I, I'm bunting twice a game at least, trying to until I get my stroke back. But he's a nice player, you know, he, he gets to a lot of balls in the center field. He stays on top of the ball offensively. He, he could be a threat. He's saved by Salvi, two balls and one strike. Club position just right. Perfect for Sal. Works on it all the time, though. You see him four games go out there with Pedro Grafal, the catching instructor for the Royals, and he goes down in that bullpen, and Grafal throws short hop balls in the dirt to him. Line to left center field, and that will go deep. Semyon will score. Fold has a double. And after the Royals got three in the top half of this inning, the A's come back with one. There he got him a pitch up. Right down the middle. Went with it perfectly. Number 28, Eric Sogard. Second time through, and Eric Sogard, who leads off in a big league game for the first time tonight with Billy Burns getting the night off. Sogard flied to center in the first inning. Inside, ball one. Polk has is much sharper tonight than he was on Saturday against Boston. He really labored in all six innings he pitched in. Gave up four runs to the Red Sox and now his change up is high and away. That was just his last outing was his third time in his career in a start without a strikeout. And this is career start number 200 for Volquez. Only three times Amazing. had a strikeout. He has two tonight, both of those in the first inning. 2 0 on Sogard. And now 3 0 with Laurie on deck. All the way, three and one. Almost the same at bat as before when he let off the game. Lopez was able to come back and get him to fly out. Those glasses still get me every time. Yeah, you don't want to call him the professor. <laughs> Some guys will have a, a little sportier glasses for, for the field, but I think he wears those on and off the field. 
he can, yes. And I'm sure he's doing that for effect now, right? I mean, <laughs> for a little bit of shock value. I mean, he looks like a guy that just won a contest and came out of the stands and they put a uniform on him. Nerd power. <laughs> Routine to left field. And Alex makes the play two down. Well, fans, we're going to have an official now Royals vote Number watch 15. party presented Rex. by 610 Glory. Sports Radio. That's next Wednesday, July 1st at McFadden's in the Power and Light District. Royals K crew will be on hand with tablets to help fans vote. For the Royals as they watch the Royals take on the Astros. There'll be great food, beverages, Royals giveaways throughout the evening. The Vote Royals Watch Party begins at 6:30 next Wednesday at McFadden's. And to learn more, go to Royals.com slash watch party. That's one night before the voting deadline. Brett Laurie takes a strike, and he struck out looking in the first inning against Volquez. Two. And Laurie's been their second most productive clutch hitter in that lineup. 357 with a runner in scoring position. Good change up down. Sam Fold at second. He drove in Marcus Simeon for the A's run in this inning. Laurie has a lot of movement. Getting ready. Trying to keep his rhythm. See him shaking that bat. Nothing too good, 0 2. Make him swing out of the zone. Out to Infante. Well hit, but out. So Volquez limits the damage. The A's get one. And the Royals carry a three run lead into the fourth inning. Our Mazda game break takes us to Milwaukee. Royals were there on their last road trip. Didn't go so well for Minnesota tonight. Aramis Ramirez goes deep. And so the Brewers beat the Twins there. So Royals now four games up. Rusty Kuntz enjoyed an off day yesterday like so many do in the Bay Area. I mean, he could have gone to Pebble Beach or to Wine Country. or What did Rusty do, guys? Sat in his room, ordered room service, and he had multiple games up on his computer and on his TV 
watching the A's and Texas, the Yankees in Houston. He said he's never been to Alcatraz in 37 years here. He had work to do. He ordered some French fries and got some room service, and he scouted the whole time, and he didn't do anything else besides that, and he didn't even go see a movie. You want to know what his movie was, Hud? He, he clipped your call the other night of you saying you could hang a week's worth of Goldberg's laundry on that line drive and was playing that for everybody in the clubhouse. This is Rusty Kuntz's entertainment, guys. <laughs> Locked into baseball, no matter what city he is in. Now, there's two ways to look at that. Uh, Here's the 2-1 to Alex. The one is the obvious, what you're saying, Joel, is he should have done more with his off day. But I'm thinking how many hardworking people back in Kansas City would say, you know what, you want to pay me to go to San Francisco and order room service and eat French fries and watch <laughs> baseball? That sounds like a great day. <laughs> you guys are cracking me up. Way to go, Rusty. Way to get Gordon on. <laughs> and, I, and I'm not questioning Rusty. I'm not the least bit surprised either. Rusty was the one that seemed surprised that people were asking him, well, why didn't you go here? Why didn't you go there? I mean, th there are a lot of sights to see in this city. This is a man in baseball season, no matter what he is doing, whether he's going from point A to point B, whether he is in the greatest of cities, the worst of cities, whatever it is, it's baseball 24-7 for Rusty Coons. Uh, you wonder why we ask him so much. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. <laughs> Vote's going to go out and have a chat with Han. Sal grounded into a 5-4-3. Double play in the second inning. Morales homered in the second. The Royals got three in the third. Kane and Hosmer drove in runs and then another run scored on an air by the first baseman Davis. Can't double him up on that one. Laurie bare hands. He makes a very good play. The A's are lucky they got one out on that play. But they didn't get the lead runner and Alex is in scoring position. Little topper. Lori plays with a lot of energy. Nice play. And HUD on that play, because of, the, of your momentum, you really have to aim far to the left of the first baseman, right? You do. You got to throw it up the line. And just the ball's so just going to naturally tail back. It is, and that's a it's a play that third baseman's got to make in the big leagues. They work on that, especially throwing from down under like that. Ball and tail line. Fastball strike to Rios. Gotta throw off that right leg coming forward. Just good enough. Alex has a big lead, and that's caught Pond's attention. And now it's 0 and 2 on Rios. He singled leading off the third inning and scored the first of the three runs. Alex's 33rd walk. That's the most by Roy. Get him out there, Rios now 0 and 2. See what Han gives him. Fastball at 91. Rios had been hitless in his previous nine at bats before jumping on a hanging curveball and singling to center field. Han has thrown some good curveballs tonight. He's thrown some bad curveballs tonight. Royals have three hits on that pitch. Fold waiting for it in center field. Alex will fake a tag. And there are two down. Well, no better place to spend your Friday nights than at Kauffman Stadium. You can stock up on dollar hot dogs and peanuts for Buck Night, presented by Visit KC. And make sure to stay after the game for a fireworks spectacular, presented by Hy-V and Pepsi. Buck Night and Summer Fireworks return next Friday, week from tonight, against the Minnesota Twins. Royals.com, 1-800-6-ROYALS for tickets.
So Omar Infante will try and extend the inning and get Gordon in from second base. Omar drove in four in the Seattle series and he really had the knockout blow in the Royals big inning on Wednesday. The Royals went nine up and nine down against Rowenis Elias on Wednesday and then they scored seven in the fourth inning and Infante drove in three with a bases loaded double. Infante's done a nice job of getting some clutch hits 304 average now with runners in scoring position. 0 and 2. around the leadoff walk. Rapid pickup at delivery.panerabread.com. By Menards, save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And by Dodge, come discover great deals during the Dodge Drive and Discover event. Beautiful Golden Gate Bridge. You know, it takes four years to go end to end painting the Golden Gate Bridge. And when they're done, they just start all over again. How Constantly it's... painting the Golden Gate Bridge. How it's to have that job? That would be, that would be tough. What do you do? Well, I, I paint the Golden Gate Bridge. Yep. Four years. And when they're done, they take those trucks and vans back to the beginning and they start all over again. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a good job to me. Line to left field. Alex is there to make the play on Stephen Vogt, who is 0 for 2. And that's good. If the Royals are going to hold the A's down offensively in this series, they need to hold down Vogt. Left fielder, number 18, Ben Zobris. So Ben Zobris with one out. He fouled out to Mustakis at third in the second inning. Ball hangs high. Two and oh. Boy, how much versatile can you get than Ben Zobris? We talked when he 
batted in the second inning. He can play seven positions. There are two or three where he's at his best. And he's a switch hitter. Close. Three balls and no strikes. Lopez wants to know where that one was. Two seamer right down the middle looked like to me. And that was close. But ball four. And it's Lopez. First walk. Extraordinary moments happen every night. But on one night, they all happen in one place. The 86 All Star game is coming up on July 14th at 6 p.m. Central on Fox. So we had a long chat with Volquez, who walked off in displeasure at the back of the mound, not happy with those last two calls. Schreiber knows it. You see Schreiber wink at Salvador yep. Perez as if. Salvi was letting Schreiber know I took care of it. There's the relationship with the pitcher and then the catcher has to maintain a relationship with the home plate umpire. Volquez needs to continue to have a good relationship with his emotions. Keep him in check. Josh Reddick A's right fielder grounded out to short in the second inning. 10 home runs, 45 RBIs. Escobar backhands out at second, and no double play as Infante throws it into the dugout. So two down, and Reddick. Second base on the air four. Yeah, that's going to be a tough one to turn. You almost want to just get one out on that. Reddick from the left side runs well. And Infante had to adjust the, to the bad throw and then never could get a good arm angle. And when you miss here, you miss. There's no going to no kick off the side wall. And, and still in play. There's so much foul ground here in O.Co. Coliseum. Tell you what, when you think about it, Hud, it may be better if the ball goes into the dugout because if it stays out of the dugout, Eric Hosmer or any first baseman has to run so far that if you got the right runner, he can go to third base. It's usually two bags for sure. One and one on Billy. Grounded out to third in the second inning. And another chat between Salvador Perez and Edinson Volquez. Talking with the new hitting coach for the Oakland A's, Darren Bush, earlier this today, said Billy's having a hard time getting the ball elevated. He's hitting a lot of ground balls to the third baseman and shortstop. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, and I said, wow, you know, he hit. He had that problem early on last year with us a lot till he finally when Hosmer went down late in the season he finally stepped up and started getting the ball elevated and driving in some big runs. For a strike, two and two. That was back last year, July 20th, when Hosmer got hit by Lester. And then Hosmer missed most of August. Billy stepped up, picked it, picked him up. Billy 273 this year with a runner at second and beyond. Three and two. Ike Davis is on deck. 
Well, after he took his ground balls at first base, and Ron Washington wore him out, and he's got a little hitting session going with Darren Bush. Jammed him. Easy play for Hosmer, and that's the inning. Volquez has given up one run in four innings, and the Royals lead 4-1. Across the Midwest to enjoy a game at Coffin Stadium. It's the Forever Royal Fan Express. The next stop is Des Moines on July 4th. And fans in designated markets will have the opportunity to win a trip to Coffin Stadium. Go to Royals.com slash Fan Express for more information. More Royals fans. Most of them over on the first base and right field side. Caught by Simeon. Now Cetus Escobar is one for three with a run scored. Now batting number eight, Mike Moustakas. And now Mike Moustakas, who is lined to left and has struck out swinging. Continue to vote Royals, and we saw with the last. Voting results that Josh Donaldson had narrowed the gap quite a bit at third base in the American League. Yeah, glad to hear that. Having a little vote party next Wednesday. That'll be great. We got to get him in, folks. Keep voting. It's getting tight. Curveball. Moustakas thought that was high. That's that one that starts out head high. It's a good hit pitch. Even if it was a ball. Anything up like that, Moose could turn on it. And almost hit Moustakas. Vote really wanted that one down. He was not only giving two, a sign two, which is normally a curve, but he was. Pointing to the ground with his fingers. Get this one down. So we've seen him double up on those curveballs. Two strikes, Moose sees all those holes out there. They're playing him to pull, but not a drastic pull. At least in modern day terms. Up the middle, Simeon. Safe. And that makes 
Makes it a 10 game hitting streak for Mike Moustakis. Nice. He'll take it. That's a knock. Simeon, great attempt. Moose. Legged it out. He knows it's on. Look at Vogt going back there to back up. Wasn't close. Strike to Lorenzo Cain. Royals have seven hits in four and a third innings. One hop to Lori. Didn't give Sogard a very good feed. But they still turn a 5 4 3 double play. The rivalry, would it be safe out here? Of course it's safe out here. We're uh, here with the, the guys we always hang out with. They got the drums going. My buddy Anson's here. Okay, let's clear some things up, all right? Because it was a heartbreaking wild card game for you guys last year. Absolutely. Yet you still were rooting for us. Yeah, I mean, when it comes down to it, that wild card game was one of the greatest games that I've ever seen. I can say that Royals fans can say the same thing. However, a World Series, when it comes to it, we don't want to see the Giants succeed in any way possible. So it was one thing where we had to recover over the sadness and heartbreak over losing that game. However, we turned to diehard Royals fans at the time, which meant at any, any cost, just... We wanted to see the Giants lose. We were just tired of these stupid orange and black parades that happen all the time. All we wanted to see was the Giants loss in the World Series, but unfortunately it didn't happen. So when it comes down to it, the Giants losing is most important for an A's fan after you winning. Number one thing is the A's World Series victory. This is what we really want. However, the next best thing is the Giants losing the World Series. We, anything to prevent an orange and black parade in downtown San Francisco, we're all for it. Oh, sorry that that did not happen. We wanted the same thing yeah, as job. you. We had one, one job. I'm sorry. Job. One job. Sorry about that. Now, is it safe for me out here? It's safe. Absolutely safe. You've been here for years. You, before all the bandwagons, before every, you were the first person to give us love in the media. This whole after this whole everything's happened. You've been out here when there's like what three people here. Now there's three thousand people here. There were three in addition to your group. Nice play there at first base, Eric Cosmer to Edison Volquez. Right. I thought it was interesting. I mean, I even wore the ring out here, and there were mixed comments about that. Like one person said they liked it, and the next person said, no, you can't. 
it is a nice ring. It, it will look way better if it was green and gold, but, you know. What's that? I don't like it. Your buddy doesn't like it. Obviously, we're not over last year. We shouldn't have traded Cespedes. We shouldn't have done a lot of things, but, you know, life goes on. Life goes on. <laughs> There's still a lot of on Cespedes. But you guys, Anson, have a great time out here. I, I did find, by the way, uh, Ryan and Hud, I, I found one Royals fan out here in a sea of green wearing a Mark Tian jersey. I don't know if that is a smart move or not, but I give him credit for the courage. Well, I know one thing. I've been to many A's Royals games in the past. He has been here for the last few years, so I'll give him that. But that is a random jersey to wear. Are there... Are there any new little deals going on out here? I mean, you got the drum. Well, we, we've seen Bacon Tuesday before. I don't know if that's still going on. We got the drums playing. We got the flags. We got we got all that stuff. What, what else are you guys bringing to the table? Feels like it's save your seat every game because everybody wants to come out to the bleachers nowadays, which is not a bad thing. But besides that, we're just doing our thing like we always do. And for all the, you do see a lot of blue out here. I will say, I'll give you credit. You guys have done a better job of drowning out the Let's Go Royals chant than any other ballpark where they just crank up the in-house music, but you guys just do your Let's Go Oakland chant. Yeah, we don't really need in-house music. We, our fans do all the work for them. You don't mind seeing all this blue here, though? You're treating everybody with respect? At the end of the day, I like seeing baseball fans. As long as they're res respectful, I don't mind it. I really don't. All right, real, real, real fan. Real Royals. <laughs> real Royals. All right. So there we go, guys. It actually is a safe place to sit out here. And maybe there aren't a lot of Raiders fans. That's what it is, right? Just, just, just bring us barbecue and we'll shut up. There you go. See, barbecue, Ryan, saves everything. <laughs> wow, they don't even know some of the local barbecue places. Oh. By the way, Joel, I know Joel can still hear me. Mark Tian came from the A's organization, so maybe maybe that's why that guy can slide with a Royals Tian jersey. That's right. Back in the um, on base percentage days, you right? You got it. You got it. Moneyball. So Mark Mark Tian, who looks a little different than he right. did from way back when, <laughs> is comfortable out here, and I hope Mark Tian, probably somewhere in Arizona, is watching right now. By the way, I should say I haven't heard anybody give it Alex Rios any grief. So. Fairly well behaved, and they just got their Let's Go Oakland chant, and I'll just try to slide out of here quietly. Yeah, that, that, I'm pretty sure that is not Mark Tian. Moustakis throws out Simeon, who scored the A's run in the third inning. <laughs> Showing everybody how strong Moustakis, his arm is. He, he's a great fan. I love it. He's all by himself up there in that section. There you go, sir. But he's been doing this for years. That's what Anson said. Yeah. So, you know, he's not just a guy that showed up this year and suddenly a Royals fan because of last year. So, now Sam Fold, he doubled in the A's run in the third inning. Remember when Jeff Francoeur, didn't Jeff Francoeur, he taped a $100 bill to a baseball, didn't he, and threw it up there so yeah. that those guys could finance their waffle and bacon feast? Yeah, right? I remember that. That was great. They love Frenchie. There you go. Sponsored, Sponsored by Jeff Francoeur. <laughs> Jeff Francoeur got a new manager today. Did you see that? I saw that. Then the next season, he bought a bunch of pizzas. There's Anson out there. Oh, I love it. He's right. That was a that was a small gathering back then. Now that section is packed. And now Volquez has gone five innings, giving up just run one run. Four one Royals to the sixth.
MLB.com at bat on your smartphone or tablet, allowing you to stay connected to the Royals wherever you are with the MLB.tv game of the day, in-game highlights, live look-ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, and more. For more information, go to Royals.com. Eric Hosmer, Kendrys Morales, and Alex Gordon coming up in our Sonic Slam inning. Hosmer is one for two with an infield single and an RBI. Our contestant is Roberta Platner from Help anybody. <laughs> Sogard throws out Hosmer. And I have to say after. 17 years. I haven't seen. I guess we're going to go with Sabetha. Sabetha. If the Royals hit a home run in this inning, Roberta wins $2,500. If the Royals hit a grand slam out of the park, Roberta wins 25 grand from Sonic and the Kansas City Royals. I got to find out where that is. Okay, now we're hearing it's Sabetha. Kendrys homered in the second inning, his ninth. He also has a nine-game hitting streak. Another chance for Sogard. And two down. Number four, Alex Gordon. And now Alex, he is singled and walked. He has reached base safely in 18 consecutive games. Those walks are valuable. And Alex seems to have the best eye so far out of the bunch. Walked for his 33rd time earlier. His last at bat. Two and Well hit into deep center field. Wow. And Fold watches it ricochet off the wall. Nine home runs for Alex Gordon. And the Royals are back out to a four run lead. Well, we have discovered two things. Sabetha is in between Marysville and Hiawatha in northeast Kansas, and Roberta Platner has 2,500 bucks headed that way. Way to go, Roberta, as you watched Alex. On a 2-0 pitch, jumped all over it. Hahn coming in, one of the most stingiest pitchers in baseball when it comes to the long ball. Gets touched up for the second time. And that ball was tattered. Before tonight, Jesse Hahn had given up three home runs in 84 and two-thirds innings. Amazing. Now he did his lift off there. He coordinated all over that one. He can't hit a ball any further in center field there than he did. That's hit hard and fair down in the left field corner. Royals have nine hits in five and two thirds innings against Jesse Hahn. Twelfth double on the year. Nice stroke. We're seeing him up. Hahn, a sinker baller. Not getting any sink on those last two hitters here. That ball's right down the middle. Salvi, nice load. Picks up that leg, gets his hands back, and strikes. Twelfth. 
Double. Leos fouls the first pitch away. Alex is one for two with a run scored. Rios led off the third inning with a single. And when the inning was over, the Royals scored three. Over the outside, no balls, two strikes. 87 pitches for Jesse Hahn. Evan Scribner begins to warm up in the A's bullpen. Still 0 2. So Han had given up three home runs in 84 and two thirds innings. And tonight he's given up two in the last four and two thirds innings. The vote keeps it in front of him. One ball, two strikes. To say 50 50, but I bet not even that good. Head. I bet he's been about 40 60 with that curveball tonight. Yeah, he's, he uses it when he's ahead and behind. 40% good, 60% bad. And that's his number one out pitch. It's a field pitch, you know, and it, it's one of the easiest to hit if it starts out head high to the hitter. He was very good against the Royals back in April, and they've made the adjustment tonight. Vote for the Royals Player of the Month at RallyHouse.com. And you'll be entered to win a majestic prize pack from Rally House. Trying to come inside, and Rio swings over a fastball and strikes out. Royals have scored one in the second, three in the third, and one more in the sixth on the Gordon home run and lead 5-1.
Smith. Good road trip for the Royals so far. I mean, they take two out of three from the A's, a day off. And sometimes you come back a little flat after a day off, but not tonight. No, they are not missing their pitches. It's been nice. Now it helped. They'll take the error where they scored a couple extra runs. And, but you got to like what you're seeing. Getting that early lead and having Volquez out there with a nice rested bullpen. Beautiful. Bring those ground balls. Volquez pitched to contact tonight. He has certainly done his part. He's given up one run. In five and a third innings. Allowing just two now hits and one walk. Royals have committed one error, so Oakland has four base runners in five and a third innings. Career start number 200 for Edinson Volquez tonight. He's understanding that it's not about blowing guys away and how many strikeouts because that takes a lot of pitches. It's about pitching to contact. I mean, that kind of movement right there. I mean, you keep that ball down at the knees and the below. It's all about outs. Get those little ground ball outs a lot easier than you can a four or five pitch strikeout in that or, or at bat. Good stuff. Brett Laurie struck out in the first inning and grounded sharply to Infante in the third. He wants him to bounce this one. Perfect. Just what Salvi asked him to do. Staying on that game plan. Beautiful bite. And Salvi, he is trying to keep that ball in front. He's not trying to catch it. He just opens up his glove and just keeps it in front of him. As good as any catcher I've ever seen do that. Our T-Mobile game changer, Stephen Vogt. His offensive ranks for a catcher. And first in the triple crown categories on base percentage, slugging percentage, which means he's a leader in OPS. But he has a long way to go to, well, first of all, he has to pass Russell Martin, who's a long ways behind Salvador Perez. Salvador Perez leads all major leaguers in voting. But with all teams needing to be represented, I would think that vote would be at the top of the list for Ned Yost trying to Get him to represent the A's yeah. the season he's had. Come off the bench and get a big hit. Volquez with his strikeout of Brett Laurie. That gives him 1,000 strikeouts in his career in his 200th career start. Nice. Crack bat. Hosmer will take it himself. And Edinson Volquez. With fewer than 100 pitches, has gone six and allowed just one run.
high-speed internet, the U-verse revolves around you. Call 1-800-PICK-ATT. By Academy Sports and Outdoors, right stuff, low price, every day. And by your Midwest Ford dealers, visit your MidwestFordDealers.com. Five one Royals to the top of the seventh inning. And there's our good buddy Vince Catronio, longtime radio broadcaster of the Oakland A's. And we're showing you him because he asked us to say hello to his daughter Olivia, who is a sophomore at K-State. Studying in the AG program, and he wanted to say hello to Olivia. Watching the game tonight. Part of the country she's going to school. She's catching this game with the Royals feed and not the A's feed. That's a good thing. So dad misses you and hopes you're having a good summer. Here's Evan Scribner. The Royals in April face Jesse Hahn and Hahn did not give up a single run in five and a third innings. And tonight the Royals get five against him in six innings. And Omar Infante greets Scribner with a base hit. Lead off man on in the top of the seventh inning. On that same big curveball that Han was throwing. Almost the same depth. Big curve and he's able to wait on. See where this That's comes his. out? Back around That's his head, ball. down over the plate. He's got that curve. He's got a fastball 88 to 92. Ten hits for the Royals, and once again that balanced offense spread out among all nine tonight: Escobar, Mustakis, Kane, Hosmer, Morales, all have one hit. Gordon has two, and Perez, Rios, and Infante all have one hit. Nice to see. After an off day, these guys got their rest. They're ready. Putting the ball in play, timely hits, and a couple long balls. Take it. It's the ninth time in the last 11 games the Royals have had 10 or more hits. There you go. Everyone feels like they've chipped in. Now the Royals trying a hit and run. Escobar does not make contact, but the ball gets away from Vote and allows Omar Infante to steal second base. His first of the year. Picked a really nice pitch to go on. Big curve takes a long time to get to the plate. Escobar goes from trying to execute a hit and run to at least move Infante, or does he even try and do that in a four run game? Now, you at know, this point late in the game, do yeah. you try and drive the ball? Yeah, he's going to stay up the middle with his approach, you hope, and then react in on a big curve. See if he can pull it. But, you know, he might. Escobar's been doing a nice job of going to the opposite field. He's been able to recognize the pitches that are middle away and wait back long enough and shoot them. Reddick's got a good arm and right. He's playing shallow. He can close it home. He's trying to go the other way. I don't think any lead safe, do you? I mean, our bullpen is as great as it is. I mean, you got to be greedy in this league. You got to get as many as you can. So if he can get a pitch out there, move Infante. Move him. Strike three over the outside. And Escobar is not happy. The fans, for whatever reason, have been booing him more than any other Royals player.
I guess his leg got in the way of Laurie's slide back in April. Yeah. How about him? Yeah. Yeah. What are you really booing him for? I don't know. Vogt was setting up inside and it looked like it caught some of the plate. Is that grid lined up tonight? I'm not sure. I mean, Vogt was reaching way across his body yeah. and that grid he, had it right down the middle. He set up way in. Obviously, he Scribner wasn't able to hit his spot. See where he set up. He set up way inside. He won a high and tight fastball, so he reached out over. And by the looks of that, even without the grid, oh, yeah. it does that like, look like it's right down the middle? No, but it looks like he set it up caught. that far inside. No, but it, it, it definitely caught some of the plate. Oh, and two on Mustakis. He is one for three with an infield single, giving him a ten-game hitting streak. It's the fourth time this year the Royals have had a game where all nine starters have had at least one hit. It is the 21st time that eight, at least eight, have had one hit. A frenzy hit. Still 0 and 2. Scribner giving Moose good pitches to go to the left field on. Those balls are all elevated. Moose just missing. Fastball curve. That's all Scribner's throwing. Two. I was reading where Evan Scribner's dad owns a furniture store. I wonder if Mike Jershley and Evan won't get together and talk furniture. Because you know, you know, Evan was working in that furniture store a lot when he grew up. And that's what Mike Jershley does in the offseason, works at a furniture store in Wisconsin. Two down. There he is. Love it that he's here in the big leagues. That guy has earned his way. Hard work. Lorenzo okay. A furniture store in Clintonville, Wisconsin. Skills. Lorenzo drove in a run in the Royals three run third and later scored a run on an error by the first baseman Davis. The A's add to their major league lead and errors committed and unearned runs allowed. Oh and two. Back into a crowd of 27,365 on what has become a cool Friday night in Oakland. And the later it gets, and the cooler it gets, the heavier the air becomes. And you really got to get into one to hit one out of this ballpark in the later innings. Fastball at 93. So the Royals had a runner at second base and nobody out. But Scribner gets out of it. And Volquez back to work in the bottom of the seventh with a 5 1 lead.
against the Royals and Edinson Volquez as we look at the sprint cuts of the game. Volquez has it working. He's got all three of them. That's right, three good pitches, four including that two-seat fastball to go along with the four. Using his defense. Pitching to contact. And when you have a defense as spectacular as the Royals, that's exactly what you do. He has reached 1,000 strikeouts, though, tonight on that strikeout by Laurie. Congratulations, Eddie Volquez. 1,000 strikeouts. Three tonight. After going without a strikeout in his previous start on Saturday against the Red Sox. One and one against Ben Zobris batting cleanup for the A's. He is fouled out to third and walked and that's Volquez only walk. Two and one. Volquez was at least appeared to be frustrated with home plate umpire Paul Schreiber after walking Zobris in the fourth and Salvador Perez did it. Good job of going out there, calming down Volquez, making sure Paul Schreiber wasn't upset. A lot of foul ground here, and Mike Moustakis sprinting to the A's dugout, and it's Salvador Perez reaching over the wall, the padded wall in front of the dugout for the first out. Talked about the foul ground here in this ballpark, and it's, it's immense. Salvi had a track it the whole way. Got close to the wall. Moose was there just in case. Excellent concentration. The last multi purpose stadium, as in baseball and football, the O.Co. Coliseum. And they have the extra seats out in their parking lot in the back for the football. All stacked up out there. Well, I guess technically the Rogers Center in Toronto. Yeah, that's indoor. But really, there are. I mean, Yankee Stadium has one football game every year. But as far as the NFL in Major League Baseball, this is the last one standing after Minnesota and Miami got new stadiums. They were the last three. Look at Moose coming. Long run for a foul ball here at this ballpark. Good hustle. He got there. One and two on Reddick. You know, before they built that Mount Davis is what they call it, all those seats in center field and beyond. The wind used to really play havoc here. And that took care of it when they built that big old structure in center field. Kind of made it a little bit easier to hit homers in the straight straightaway center. I was going to say, it's hard to hit a home run at night. Now it was a lot harder. I mean, when McGuire and Conseco were hitting home runs the way that they were, I mean, you knew that they were strong because this was a tough place to hit a home run. Reddick will reach as the ball ricochets off of Escobar's glove. He's upset. Now for in Seattle, that's an error. We'll see how they scored here in Oakland. Yeah, their guy was a little tough. Now that a designated hitter, number 16, Billy Butler. We've seen him make plays like this with a short hop pick to his left, or excuse me, to his right there, that backhander. <laughs> it's an error. It must be a West Coast thing. Well, I just heard the official score say E6. Wow. Well, there's the standard that Major League official scores have for Alcides Escobar.
Well, he was mad. Eski was mad. I guess if you ask him, he felt like he should have made the play. So one on one out for Billy Butler. Volquez is over 100 pitches. One and one on Billy. He is grounded out to third and popped out to first. Billy's grounded into 11 double plays this year. Volquez has induced eight. That's what he's looking for here. Two and one. Royals regular seventh inning man is warming up in the bullpen. Volquez has gotten one out in this inning. We'll see what kind of reception Kelvin Herrera gets from the A's fans if he appears tonight. Leos backing up near the track, two down. Now Billy 0 for 3, and now 0 for his last 12. See Salvi, he's really convicted about that fastball down and away, but it, he got it up for just Jason. a little bit enough for Billy to hit it. Billy knew he, if he came down, it was going to be an out. Mike Davis with Reddick at first base, two outs. Volquez, a few starts ago, was fighting his mechanics. Dave Idle is telling me he, there's no need for him to even worry once he gets out there. His mechanics are really good right now. And any little thing that doesn't feel right, try not to think about it. Just keep getting out. Kane wants it. He's got it. Seven innings for Edinson Volquez. So he gets the game to the eighth inning, giving up just one run. And the Royals lead 5 1. Outstanding. Looking good tonight. Five to one the score as Panera takes us around the league. And the White Sox lose again. Detroit the winner. Cleveland drops one to Baltimore. Told you about Milwaukee beating Minnesota. And the Yankees over Houston. Our Mazda game break takes us to Detroit. And J.D. Martinez. No question off the bat of this one. Look at the outfielder there. Just stand and watch it. That is number 19 on the year. For J.D. Martinez, pretty good day for the Royals in the division. Yes, Detroit wins, but everybody else loses. And Houston, who's behind them for second-best record in the American League, also drops one. So the Royals 
If they can hang on two innings away from a four and a half game lead. The Royals have done their part on the mound. Edinson Volquez seven innings one run two hits. Well, you know he has been steady. He's been the most consistent starter of the year by far. This is Eric O'Flaherty. He's an A's Chevy call to the bullpen. Jesse Hahn went six. He gave up all five runs. Evan Scribner pitched the seventh. And now Eric O'Flaherty. The Royals gave him a bad time the last time O'Flaherty pitched against them. Lowry makes the play just inside the foul line. The deciding game of the Royals A series back in April. Number 25. Scott Casimir Andy pitched a gem. Ronales. And then the Royals scored three off of O'Flaherty in the eighth. They won that game and won the series. Just heard some boos out of nowhere. And it was for Kelvin Herrera who warms up again in the Royals bullpen. <laughs> they, they don't forget, do they? Now those boos I understand. Kelvin threw behind Brett Laurie's back. Lori kept saying he threw behind my head, but it was behind his back. And then pointed at his head and got the suspension. So that I understand, but why they've been booing Alcides Escobar all night, I, he I can't figure out. What did he do? Nothing. His field disposition and made the force out. Yeah, he had his knee wrecked. He had to miss the final two games of that series. You know on Kendry's Morales he homered in the second inning as a left hand batter getting it just inside the left field foul pole that was the first run of the game and Morales has hit a nine straight and now on with a walk and he was part of that rally I just talked about against O'Flaherty when the Royals scored three in the eighth inning to beat O'Flaherty and the A's. This is the one that put the Royals in front. He just missed a home run to straightaway center field. He settled with a two run double. And there was a lot of emotion built up that day. And not just for the Royals, but the crowd. And the Royals took two out of three from Oakland. Can't wait to get back home, feel that energy. Yeah. Morales will take a walk. 22nd. One and one to Alex who's had a big night. He singled in the second, walked in the fourth, and homered to center field in the sixth. And that home run is our Chrysler drive of the game. High fastball that didn't sink. Matter of fact, it sunk over the center field wall with a nice kickback. Wonder if we have a tape on that the distance. Two balls, two strikes. Sogard's glove, no play at first base. And that's a base hit. Well, the official score I heard he changed the ruling. He gave whoever that was. Okay, good. Yeah, he, gave, feel better. Yeah, okay. he took the air off the board for, for Escobar. All right, so if you like to score the game in the bottom of the seventh inning, Reddick reached on an infield single, not an air. Because if that's a base hit, and Escobar's is an air. So well, I'm going to eat my shoe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad they changed it. I knew they would. Ladies and gentlemen, coming in to pitch for the athletic. Fernando Rodriguez is the new A's pitcher. Fernando Rodriguez. One on. Two on. One out. Perez coming up. 
The call to the bullpen is brought to you by Advantel Networks for over 30 years. And this is Fernando Rodriguez. He inherits Morales at second base and Gordon at first. He's got a little bit of a high ERA for a reliever. Fastball slider curve. The A's are second in the league in team ERA. The Royals are third, but they are completely different pitching staffs. The A's starters have thrived. Their bullpen has had a bad, bad time. Royals have the best bullpen ERA in the league. The A's have the worst. Infield fly rule. As Sogard makes a play on Salvador Perez, two down. Number 15. Rios. The Oakland A's have won their share of blowout games this year. But when the games are close, they have really struggled. And that's because of their bullpen. The Oakland A's have had 28 losses this year by either one run or two runs. That's the most in the major leagues. Some pretty big curveballs tonight, haven't we? All three guys that the Royals have faced have those big curves. I mean, 12 to 6 hammers right over the top. <laughs> 0 and 2 on Rios. Rios has been 0 and 2 all night. From a base hit, his first time up there to left field. Very high in the air. Sogard is there. Fold is coming in from center, and Fold, who ran a mile, makes a play to end the inning. To the bottom of the eighth, Kelvin Herrera. We'll come into a chorus of boos. Five one Royals.
The other 27,362 out of 27,365 are booing Kelvin Herrera. That's not true. There are a lot of Royals fans here tonight, but I asked you earlier, HUD, I wonder what Herrera's reception would be. Well, they were booing him when he was warming up in the bullpen. And the other people that weren't booing were going, what are they booing him for? They can't remember. Herrera pitched on Wednesday as the Royals won 8 2 and won the series from the Mariners. A 1 2 3 seventh inning, finishing with a strikeout. Marcus Simeon leads off for the A's. And he looks thoroughly overmatched. Most, most hitters are. That, that's an above, above average fastball. Now you got to stay with that pitch, right? Absolutely. This is what we've been talking about. Here's why A's fans are booing. Go back to April 19th. Greg Gibson. That was right behind the middle of his back. And Brett Laurie, I don't I don't blame him for getting thrown at and getting upset the way he did. Because it was the second time. But this whole thing that he went on and on about it being behind his head. Yeah, it wasn't even close to his head. And, I mean, and, and that you're really, you're really accusing someone of something pretty dirty when you say he was throwing behind my head. And that velocity. But he kept talking about it. And just kept getting worse and worse. Well, finally they had enough. And so is Simeon. Rara, that, that fastball is as dominant, especially when he puts it where he wants it. Go along with that outstanding changeup. Lori, by the way, would be the fourth batter in the inning. Sam Full drove in the A's run in the third inning with a double going the other way against Volquez. You've noticed the same thing I've noticed when Herrera lets go of the ball. He has a, a, a little extra hop that he hadn't had before that I'm, I'm not used to seeing now. I don't know if he's off balance. Obviously he's not. He's throwing every pitch a strike, but he could be throw, overthrowing. But you know he, he throws 100 when he's not. But but there's something different about his delivery on his follow through. That yeah, looks like he's going for a little extra tonight. He's got a little recoil going. Change up. Paul to Infante. Two down. So there's Brett Laurie on now deck. Number 28. Eric. So guys staring down Kelvin Herrera. He don't want any part of Herrera. <laughs> He's sure acting like he does, doesn't he? Pull from the on deck circle. Ninety-seven in for a strike to Sogard, who is 0 for three. Mentioned earlier that Sogard is hitting leadoff for the first time in his career. Billy Burns, who's been a rookie sensation for the A's, has been leading off, and you got to find the right time to give a player a game off. And Bob Melvin felt like tonight was that night, but it's very rare that a player with a 14-game hitting streak gets a game off, and that's what Burns has. There always could be something else going on that we don't know about. 
But yeah, I don't want to come out of the lineup if I'm hot. But being a rookie, maybe uh, the manager overruled it. Sure. Dan, you bring up a good point. There could be a sore muscle or be something that's been bothering him. The A's played yesterday, by the way, while the Royals were off. They were in Texas. Two balls, two strikes. Field, and we'll have to wait another game for Herrera Lori part two. The Royals will take the three up, three down inning. Herrera was good, strong. Oakland. Tuesday, the 2015 FIFA Women's World Cup semifinals begin as Team USA takes on Germany. Team USA defeated China. Germany defeated France. Coverage begins at Tuesday, 5 Central, only on your local Fox station and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. There you go, ladies. Fernando Rodriguez stays on for the ninth inning. Omar Infante, Alcides Escobar, and Mike Moustakis. Infante leads off for a second time tonight in the seventh inning. He led off with a single and stole his first base of the year. The Royals weren't able to get him home. Out into center field. Sam Fold takes care of it. Coming up after the game, Boulevard Royals live with Joel. If the Royals win, we'll have a guest live on the field. We'll get a reaction from the Royals clubhouse. Hear from Royals manager Ned Yost. Highlights and in depth insight. Had a little brain freeze there. No, no. Joel is excellent with insight. You can count on it. One hop to Lori. Two down in the ninth inning. Royal scored one in the second on a home run by Morales. They got three in the third. Kane and Hosmer drove in the runs. Another run scored on an air. And Alex Gordon hit a two run home run in the sixth. Royals have won eight of their last ten games against the Oakland A's. That includes the wild card victory.
The curve is a little bit low. Ball one. A couple of Royals tonight extended significant hitting streaks. Franklin Morales is getting ready for the bottom of the ninth inning. Mike Moustakis extended his hitting streak to 10 games with an infield single. And Kendry's Morales with a home run extended his hitting streak to nine games. All nine starters have at least one hit tonight. Fouled it off of his foot. Three and two. Kane would be next. And Mustakis is on with a two out walk. Sixteenth walk on the year. Moose can use more of those. Lorenzo Kane. His batting average is good. He's right in the middle of the pack in the top ten and hitting in the American League. And that those walks are going to help that even more. And if he can walk at least once a game, keep that average up. Inside to Lorenzo Kane. The A's in the bottom of the ninth will have Lori Vote Zobrist. If anybody gets on Reddick. One and one. Two balls and one strike on Keane. And now three balls, one strike. So after getting a couple of quick outs, Rodriguez is. Struggling to put the ball in the strike zone. Nobody warming up behind him. Take the walk. Of course, every hitter three and one, you almost expect a fastball anymore. It doesn't always happen in this modern game now, but looking to hit. Not that one. Back to back walks. Number 35, Eric Hosmer. Oakland A's with a five game winning streak on the line tonight. Best baseball they've played all year. They've done very little against Royals pitching. And Eric Hosmer with a chance here to really put this game away. And Rodriguez misses again, and now Vogt will go out and have a chat.
There's a strike one and one. It's interesting the A's. They have the fourth best run differential in the American League, but they have the fourth worst record. I mean, those are just two numbers that just don't line up with one another. Strike to Hosmer. And the reason for that is when the A's win, they win in blowout fashion. They have 10 wins by seven or more runs this year. That's the most in the major leagues. But when we mentioned earlier, they have 28 losses by one run or two runs, also the most in the major leagues. There is no gray area with this team at all. They either win a blowout, but when the games are tight, and we told you how much their bullpen has struggled this year. The bullpen has struggled and the A's have struggled in the close games. With two outs back to back walks one and two to Hosmer. Still one and two. Sogard fields Hosmer is out and now the Royals are three outs away from taking game one and increasing their lead in the central to four and a half games. up on that bus because they're all going if it's up to the fans though come on keep the voting going tonight's copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the kansas city royals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the kansas city royals baseball corporation ryan lefevre Rex Hudler, Joel Goldberg at the O.co Coliseum with producer Joe Lavero, director Steve Kurtenbach, associate producers Al Broughton, Sam Abramson, Dave Holtzman, and the producer of Royals Live is Brian Shapiro. A four run Royals lead. Franklin Morales is in. Greg Holland warming up just in case. And a strike from Morales to Brett Laurie. Morales has given up one earned run in his last nine and two thirds innings. Solid performer, 194 opponents average. Good hard fastball and slider, nine and 95 with that baby. Comes out of that that windup, that delivery, really fast. Hard for a hitter to try to pick up that rotation. 
And his release point. So he'll get a right hand batter, a left hand batter, and then the switch hitter Zobris coming up. Slow curveball, and Laurie hits it to Rios for the first out. It's a day game tomorrow, so you don't have to stay up all night to watch the Royals anymore beginning tomorrow. Tomorrow's game will begin at 3 o'clock Kansas City time. Chris Young and Scott Kazmir. And same time on Sunday afternoon. Then we go to Houston. We're back in the central time zone. A couple of guys there with some good numbers. Low ERAs. Stephen Vogt takes ball one. He is 0 for 3 against Royals pitching so far tonight. He has a seven game hitting streak on the line here. One and one. Morales for most of the year has been the lone lefty in the Royals bullpen. The Royals now have Brandon Finnegan with him. But Morales didn't do a whole lot against lefties early in the season and now he is just dominating lefties. In his first 14 appearances. Lefties hit over 400 against him. And now in his last 13 outings lefties are hitting under 100. Against him. He's got that good slider working on him that's going to stay in. A lot of foul ground. Mike Moustakis can't quite get there. Well, you got to run a mile to get there. And Moustakis was not playing close to the line. Yep. Before the game today, I told Moose, Moose, I see you making a play in the foul ground in this series sometime. I don't know when it's going to be. And he said, I like that, hut. I, I want to make one over there. They all want to make plays for their pitchers. Almost got to it. Ooh. So that'll get the fans all stirred up. They might have got him on the hand. Oh, it's a tough place to get hit. Mm. Yeah, it's near the wrist. Too bad didn't hit that elbow pad. Just missed the pad. And he's getting ready to turn Ooh, on. And that hit him flush too. Yeah, you know that's uh, a terrible spot for a hitter to get hit. Sure hope there's nothing wrong there. Ladies and gentlemen, bench running for Stephen Vogt, number 19, Josh Fegley. So Josh Fegley, the A's backup catcher, will run. Now batting left fielder, number 18, Ben Zobrist. Ben Zobrist, switch hitter, bats from the right side against Morales. Runner and the tying run is on deck, and that makes it a save situation. Greg Holland has been warming up all inning. <laughs> 
two and one on Zobrist. Steven Vogt is on the other team. So Morales trying to get him out no matter what. He is also one of the most likable guys in the game. And Salvi maybe going out and make sure Morales is all right. I'm sure that shook him up too. Three balls, two strikes. Yeah, no, that was not intentional by any means. He just let go of fastball and got a little high and tight. This is so unfortunate. And it hit him in the wrist. Hope it's not hurt. Badly. Now toward left center, and that's to the wall. Fegley will be waved home. Ben Zobrist has an RBI double to make it a 5 2 game. And he turns it into a save situation. Comes Ned Yost. So Greg Holland is on to get the final two outs of the ninth inning. Eventually turns into a run and turns it into a save situation. Greg Holland is 14 out of 15. He has two outs to get. The tying run is still on deck. Zobris drove in the run with a double, and Josh Reddick is at the plate. Reddick's two for two in his career off of Holland with a couple of strikeouts. Excuse me, two for four. Out into left field, toward the corner, and Alex runs it down, keeping that tying run on deck. It's hard to believe with all the success that Greg Holland has had that there was a time when he was nervous but he made his major league debut on this mound 
Back in 2010. And both he and Ned Yost, when they retell the story, we'll talk about how nervous Greg Holland was, but he got through it. August 3rd, 2010, Greg Holland's Major League debut right here. And now his good buddy, Billy Butler. Gave a nice fastball there. It's the first time these two friends have ever matched up. Slider is called a strike. Billy is 0 for 3 so far tonight. More to that story, Greg Holland got into trouble in that inning. He walked a couple of hitters. Ned Yost went out there and said, Well, kid, you've got yourself into a little mess out here, haven't you? All the infield was gathered around in the mound, and Ned said, Who wants to start a double play? And Unievsky Betancourt says, I will. And Ned says, All right, Holland's going to throw a strike. We're going to get a double play and get out of the inning. And what do you think happened? No way. He called it and rolled it. Oh, Billy. Next pitch, ground ball, inning, inning, double play. And now here he is, one of the best closers in the game, and he closes out this one, striking out his good buddy, Billy Butler. And the Royals take game one, 5-2. And if you include the wild card game, the Royals have now won nine of their last 11 against the Oakland A's, putting an end to their current five-game winning streak. When the A's... Were in Kansas City, they hit four home runs. The Royals did not hit a home run, but tonight it was the other way around. The Royals hit two. Kendry's Morales in the second inning, and Alex Gordon. This put the game away. A two run home run in the sixth against Jesse Hahn. I mean, he stepped all over that ball. That ball was not walking. Great.